Hello, I'm Stephen Russell. Today I would like to discuss what is on resistance or RDS on and why is it so important in a power semiconductor device context? How can we use this as a metric in which to compare different products? There are three factors upon which power devices are mainly judged. We can see here what I've termed the power triangle. There is a constant tug of war between on-state performance, switching and robustness reliability. Unfortunately, improving one of these tends to compromise at least one of the other two. A fourth factor that shouldn't be forgotten is cost. This is always trying to be optimised alongside the three aforementioned metrics. RDS on is not unique to power transistors, however it is extremely pertinent to them. Power devices are analogue, not digital. They deal with the flow of electrical energy itself, rather than signals. So, due to the extreme levels of power involved, even fractions per percentage loss in efficiency can be significant. Put simply, the on resistance is the electrical resistance encountered when the transistor is switched from its off to on state and relates to one of the most fundamental electronics equations, Ohm's law. V equals IR, or R equals V over I, as summarised here in another triangle. This can be related to a transistor's output characteristics, an example of which can be seen here. Where the plot is approximately linear, we can extract RDS on. Here, for example, at around 0.9 volts drain to source and 15 volts gate to source, the current is 15 amps, yielding an RDS on of approximately 60 milliohms. It is important to note here the value is influenced by the gate voltage. So where does RDS on come from in a physical sense? Well, it differs for each technology, but the overall idea is the same. When motivated by voltage, charge will negotiate the path of least resistance. So what does this look like for different material systems and different device concepts? For a silicon or silicon carbide MOSFET, the structure is essentially the same. Most silicon IGBTs are non-linear internal, due to the collector diode. So we won't discuss them in terms of RDS on, rather we use a figure known as VCE SAT. We see illustrated here the components that make up on resistance in a planar gate power MOSFET. The most substantial of these, generally speaking, are RCH, channel resistance, and R drift, the drift region resistance. Particularly in low voltage, i.e around 650 volt silicon carbide MOSFETs. These are dominated by the channel resistance. But as we move up the voltage classes, the drift region becomes progressively thicker to be able to block the associated voltage in the off state, and our drift begins to dominate. Different device structures can help in reducing or removing certain components. Here we see a trench MOSFET, where the channel is formed vertically, and we are able to eliminate the RJ FET component of on resistance. Another fabrication technique, commonly used today, wafer thinning, can remove substantial amounts of a device's substrate, and hence greatly remove and reduce our substrate resistance. As an example, Let's look at some analysis we did of a couple of Genesis silicon carbide MOSFETs. Here we see their third generation 750 volt device. Note a drift region thickness of around 6 microns from the delineated scanning electron microscope cross section. In the scanning capacitance microscopy image, we can see relative doping concentration. 
Note the drift region epitax is formed of two distinct regions, measuring 1.2 and 4.8 microns respectively. The thinner intermediate layer is more highly doped and known as the buffer layer. Now looking at Genesis 3.3 kilovolt silicon carbide MOSFET, we see the drift region measures approximately 31 microns, over five times greater than the 750 volt counterpart. Gallium nitride hemp's are a different sort of structure, but we can again break this down in terms of resistance components. This SEM cross-section of a recent Navitas 650 volt GAN hemp shows a source drain distance of around 44 microns, so larger than its silicon carbide competitors. However, despite this lateral structure being longer, the two-dimensional electron gas formed at the gallium nitride, aluminium gallium nitride heterojunction interface provides very high carrier velocity and hence lowers the resistance in this region. It is unfair to directly compare just RDS on. Recall, resistance equals voltage divided by the current. So a device with very high current, which can be obtained by making a large area device, will have an unfair advantage. So we normalize by device area to obtain specific on resistance. How should we do this? By the entire die area or by the active area only? This is an open topic for debate and strictly speaking, probably by the active area only. But for fairness, we quote our figures in terms of the entire die, because in most cases, the termination region and other peripheral features are minimal in these devices. See the die of the 750 volt Genesis MOSFET here. If, however, these features are significant, we will always make a point to discuss this. The final point worth considering is, as with all electronics, resistance varies with temperature. See the plot here. So for the fairest comparison, we should quote at 25 degrees centigrade, which is stated on all data sheets, and also be careful to pick the same gate voltage if at all possible. As mentioned previously, this will significantly affect the channel resistance. Thank you very much for your attention.